What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Li Zay Lights Down. Back for another video. So I'm gonna be talking about God despises polygamy, aka promiscuity, um, adultery, sexual sin, all of that, right? So what I'm about to show you might be it's gonna be mind blowing to you. And you're probably thinking what I'm about to show you is like Zay, how do you have all this time? Literally, I spend all my time throughout my day. Like since you know it's a break for everyone across the world, you know, Christmas break. You know, I'm use all this time to get into the word and you know give y'all some gems and some verses, you feel me? Cause I wanna do this and help out. Uh, 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 uh. Uh. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, so the first one is the warning and consequences. The verses for this one is Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 through 17, Proverbs 6, verse 24 to 26, 6 to 32, and Proverbs 7, 4, verse 5. Um, you can check those out yourself. But I'm going to go ahead and read one of them. I think, which, you know, this is how you sabot a some promiscuous woman, or aka a woman who is seductive. Proverbs chapter 5. Verse 3 through 17 and 6 and 32. I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 through 17. It says, For the list of a strange woman dropped as in honeycomb. Oh, my bad, y'all. Her, her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is a bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take on hold on hell. That says a lot right there. And this is what God is talking about, a wicked woman. This God, God literally is telling you, like telling us about a wicked woman that, right now, like in this verse. Let's those show the pawn of the path of life. Her ways are moved with that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Oh, I say, God said, listen. Remove the way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Don't go into her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. A.K.A. pretty much what that verse is saying is like your fruits and your labors going to be taken away from strangers. And thy more at the last, when the flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, how I've hated instruction and my heart despised reproof. Pretty much regret of not listening and start listening to the flesh and start growing, like dwelling on your flesh and you know, having open ears and not having an you know, open mind. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, not inclined my ears to them that instructed me. It says it's right there. I was almost all evil in the midst of congregation assembly. And not only that verse tells you about how to avoid a seductive woman, but that also tells you right there of uh, what it means to not have any self-control or not being disciplined. Because it tells you right here that when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, Proverbs chapter 5 verse 11 and say how I hated my instructions, my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. That's what happens when you don't have no discipline or self control. Like promiscuous women, their target are women. I mean, men who don't have no self control and discipline. And don't that sound familiar to y'all? Don't that sound very familiar? <clears throat> Social media. <clears throat> and why do I say that? Because I too was in the strap, but thank God. I have wisdom and really he God gave me the vision, like gave me the glasses to see for what these schemes and these tactics these women are doing. It's like the fishing rod. It's like going fishing. But women are doing it. <laughs> women are using their bodies. They're using their femininity as bait to justify their wrongdoings, their sexual, you know, sin, sexual morality. You know, do things that are not godly. You know what I'm saying? Like, do things that just show their flesh, show their titties, show their behind. 
and you know it's if you keep seeing it after a while and it's like what are they doing now if you you don't have a mind like me if you don't have that type of mindset you'd be like oh you gonna want you know gonna be indulging that you gonna want to engage in that keep seeing it all the time and time and time like i'm not saying like you know because let me be honest with you i'm pretty sure there's people out there who think otherwise like bro are you gay no it's not the fact that you know this man is gay or you know I'm gay. It's the fact that, you know, you got to have a disciplined mind. Like, your mind got to be disciplined. You got to be disciplined. You got to have an open mind. Just because, you know, somebody is disciplined doesn't mean that they're gay. Just because you're not thinking with what's down here doesn't mean they're gay. You know what I'm saying? So, but with social media, sorry, uh, my dog is playing with my little brother. But social media is the go-to place for women for their targets. They're looking for men who are not don't have no self-control, don't have no discipline. <laughs> and the Bible verse where I just told you right there, Proverbs chapter five, verse eleven through thirteen, where he talks about being in regret for not listening to his teachers. So, and this next verse right here. Um, seven verse four through five. Proverbs chapter seven, yeah, verse four through five. And this is how you would literally avoid a woman who is adopted for promiscuous or a wicked woman. Say unto wisdom, though my art sister, my yet yeah, though art my sister, and call understanding. Thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman and from the stranger which flattered with her words. Women, we ain't means by that. What that verse really means is women like this, they'll say you a dream. They'll sweet talk you. And like the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 through 17, a woman's mouth is smoother than oil. Smoother than oil. Then again, seductive. The woman is trying to lure you into her trap. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 to 17 talks about how to make it go to a path through death and really go through hell. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 through 17. It says it right here. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Sharp as two edged so her feet go down to death, her steps take on the hell. Let those show the path, ponder the path of life. Her ways move that don't can't not know them. Pretty much the saying she does not care about the path of life at all. Does not. And that tells you right there, that's the sign of a wicked woman. That she's promiscuous, don't really care about, none exclusive. And then for this other verses right here, 19, it says, Let her be as loving as high and pleasant wrong. Talking about your wife. Let her breast satisfy thee all times, and but be thou ravaged always with her love. And embrace the bosom. No, and with thou, wilt thou, my son, be ravaged with a strange woman? And embrace the bosom of a stranger. For the ways of the man are before the eyes of the Lord. And he pondered all goings, and his own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and be shall he shall be holding on with the course of his sins. And he shall die without destruction and greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. So Yeah. Y'all y'all do not want to date a woman who constantly just have sex with multiple partners y'all don't want that y'all don't want a woman who just wants wants sex at the multiple where do you see the value in that in that woman who who goes after that lifestyle where do you see that let me know please let me know and Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 35 to 39. 
And this is a prime example of how most women are who are promiscuous. 16. It says 35 through 39. Wherefore, wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord God. Be thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through the, my whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all the lot of idols, and thy abominations by the, the children, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore I give all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all them that thou hast loved, with all them that thou hast hated, I will even gather them around against thee, and will discover them into nakedness unto them. This is God's judgment for prostitution. And discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. And I will break judge thee as women take break wedlock and shed blood or judge, and I will give thee blood and fury and jealousy. This doesn't sound pleasing at all. This is absolutely good. <laughs> but that literally that whole verse right there just to show that God does not like adulterous adulterous prostitution in that verse right there that I just gave you there's a woman an unfaithful woman well God found this woman she was lost and she had nothing and then he covered her with clothes and jewelry but she decided to give it all away and show it out to other idols and that's how she repaid God and so now that verse that I just read to you pretty much was a judgment for prostitution. But the other verse, I got another for, one for this one is Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28. It says, but I say unto you that, that whoever so look on a woman to lust have her committed adultery already in his heart. And that's Jesus' quote. Jesus quoted that. What I gave you was an Old Testament. But what Jesus said about lust, adultery, yeah. He said, it's, if you already looked a woman through lust by an eye, you already committed adultery. When I read that, I said, <sighs> guess I need to clean up my mind and guess I really need to really, really, really need to make some changes. I, I, like, <sighs> like that's a, this is my exact reaction. <laughs> but those are the words from Jesus. <clears throat> those are his words. Literally, God does not really play about adultery sexual morality, sexual sin. God literally does not joke around or play around at all. And then this is what a lot of people must understand too. Like, I know that some of you are probably at this world being like, you know, dang, like, why can't we do all this stuff that we want to do? God do things out of love. You think it's fun and all the games and everything, but until you actually understand, like, what goes on behind to it and you see for what it truly is it's not fun at all sexual morality sexual sin because think about it when you get into sexual sin so much you get diseases unwanted pregnancies women get unwanted pregnancies rape all this other stuff happen when you let sexual sin take over you got to understand that God do things out of love. He don't do things to take the joy and the fun. Y'all think that God just, and I used to think this way too, like God will really take sex away. No, he do want us to enjoy that, but only with one partner. Only with one woman that we choose to marry. Because really, sex is supposed to be for marriage. But the world looks at it as it's like, oh, it's easy and accessible, pretty much. 
but through God's eyes, it's only exclusive with one woman. But the world, you know, Satan, he pushed out to the world to take, get everyone in the world to think that, oh, I see this woman over there. I'm going to, you know, do whatever I can do to go get her and then do whatever, da 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 da. That's not how God looks at sex. That's not how God wants us to view women. He wants us to go look within and look outside, but mostly look within within the woman. But he doesn't want us to be like that, be the main focus on when it comes to like with a woman. So, yeah. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Number two, promiscuous women are seductive. Yep, Leviticus chapter 18, verses 20. There's all types of noises that y'all hear, but I'm gonna still get going. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It says, Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife, another wife, other. If you have a, let's say you got a best friend and he has a wife, God does not want you to look at his wife. That's pretty much what it's saying. Or even try to cheat or steal his wife. To defile thyself with her, and thou shalt not let any seed of thy seed pass through the fire of Tumalek. Thy neither shall thou profane the name of the thy God, I am the Lord. Literally, sexual sin is literally the biggest like that's like the most crucial sins. Cause like the sexual energy, like sex itself, like yeah, the whole activity engagement of sins is so powerful. That like it's like once you let go of that sexual sin, you know that could be like having an addiction to her sex, masturbation, even looking through pictures and like it's hard to get rid of. And when you try to do it on your own, it's gonna be hard. But when you allow God to help you and to take the leap of faith and do the action, aka putting away your cell phone, um, switching up of what you see on social media, reading the word, most, of course, definitely. That helped me out. It's going to be so easy for you. Be a lot more easy of you getting rid of the sexual sin. Because you try to do it on your own and, you know, you still try to show it to God. You know, that, that just pleases him. It does. But if you try to do it on your own, it's not going to be very easy. It's like I said, as long as you keep into the word and ask God, he's going to help you out for sure. And I got another verse. <clears throat> Just keep burping, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. And talking about women are seductive. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10 to 27. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Mm. And behold, there he met him a woman. This is the story of a young knight. This is a story, by the way. <laughs> behold, there he meet him, a woman, with the attire of an harlot, a hoe or a whore, and sucked out a heart, and she is loud and stubborn. Her feet are bought and not in her house. So now she is without, now in the streets, <laughs> and lying in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day I have paid my vows. Therefore, I came forth to meet thee, then to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved words, fine linen with Egypt, 
and I perfume my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. For the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He is away. My husband is away. He has taken a big money with him, and he will come on it the day appointed. What I'm telling you right now is how seductive really works. You see how she says the burnt offerings? Back in the Old Testament, burnt offerings was one way of getting God's attention. She used that as bait to lure him in. Lure her into her trap, to her den of death. Lead him to hell. So that she can get whatever she wants from him. Have sex with him. That's it. And so, after that, with her much fair speech, she called him to yield. With the flat of her lips, she forced him. Mm. He goes after her straightway as an go to the slaughter. Or as a fool to the correction of stops. Took a dark strike to his liver and his birth has to the snare. And know that not that it's not not that it's for his life. Harden unto me now, therefore, ye children, and attend the words of mine. Let not thine decline to her ways. Go not astray in her path, for she hath cast down many wounded, yet yeah, many strong men have been slain by her. What do you mean by slain by her? They had multiple, you know what, with her. Her house is a way of hell going down to the chambers of death. Hell. So, yeah. That is what happens when you get involved with or engage with a promiscuous woman, a wicked woman. Let's see, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 3. Whoever loves wisdom rejoices his father, but who he that keep company with harlots spend his substance. So pretty much, I'm going to read that again. He who loves Wisdom rejoice his father. Lost well by he that keep company with the harlot spend his substance. You be one with the harlot, pretty much. If you ask me, I would not be one with a harlot. Be one with a promiscuous woman. I would not. But yeah. Polygamy. Promiscuity, not of God. I don't see where it says in the Bible where polygamy is okay or promiscuity is okay because there's other verses, I mean, other chapters in the book of the Bible that talks about promiscuity. And God really despises that. But, yeah. So those are the verses. Like I said, if you want to check these out yourself, I'm going to go ahead and give y'all a few verses I found. For number one, warning the consequence of a promiscuous woman, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 to 17. Proverbs chapter 6, 24, verse, verse 24 to 26. Proverbs 6, 32. Proverbs 7, verse 4 to 5. And for number two, promiscuous women are seductive, 7 through 10 to 27. Leviticus 18, 20. And Proverbs chapter 29, verse 3. And if you want to go to back to where Solomon, like what happened with his wives, what they made him do, Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 3, and Kings chapter 11, verse 14, yeah, and that's pretty much it, but... If you got anything you want to say about promiscuity, sexual sin, 
if you had you know notes or anything you like to say about this video or you have any thoughts about this video let me know in the comments section down below but if you made it to the end of this video i really appreciate your time thank you for watching if you know that somebody needs to see this video please go ahead and share it <laughs> keep burping oh uh, <laughs> but anyways thank you for your thank you for your time thanks for watching like comment share and subscribe turn post notifications while you're at it love yourself protect yourself take good care of yourself stay prayed up read the word zay lifestyle signing out